I like my GPS, and then I found out that I have a GPS in my car, but then I also have a GPS on my phone. I turn them both on at the same time. And just to make it interesting, I program them to go about a mile apart to two different destinations because I like to hear them go at each other. In 50 yards, make a left. In 200 yards, make a right. Oh yeah? Recalculate this. I just like hearing them bigger because it kind of feels like I'm in the car with my in-laws. <laughs> I went to visit an old woman in the hospital there. I said, Mrs. Rosie, now it's so good to see you. What are you here for? She said, well, on Monday I saw a cardiologist. On Tuesday I saw a surgeon. And tomorrow I'm seeing a pulmonologist. I said, oh my goodness, what do you have? She said, nothing, but I'm not leaving this hospital till I get a husband for my granddaughter. <laughs> Dad was very cautious, so he got rid of all the knives in the kitchen because um, there were a lot of kids around, and he was afraid that my mother would cook. Uh, <laughs> uh, he was also really cheap. Uh, I remember when I was five, I lost my first tooth, um, and before I went to sleep that night, I put it under my pillow, and the next morning when I woke up, the tooth was under my father's pillow in a really fancy apartment. It has two floors and no ceiling, um, which is interesting. Um, I love living in the city because there's always something to do. Like uh, Saturday night, uh, I felt a little lonely, so I went out and bought a mirror. Um, but there are things that I hate about living in the city, uh, like homeless people. Um, and like, if you can't afford the city, don't live here. That's what I feel. I'm back. <laughs> My grandmother's 102 and a half years old. You can clap. She's not here. She can't hear you, but you can clap if you want. Um, I, that was super lean. But my grandma's 102 and a half years old. That's not the start of a joke. That's just my way of saying that I go antiquing on Sunday afternoons. Speak, I'll say that. Okay, so speaking of people that are old and ill-equipped to handle new technologies, um, let's have a quick chat about self-checkout counters and those who select that form of checkout and payment at the supermarket. I've come up with a, with a quick checklist to help those individuals that select this option without really thinking it through first. If your first computing system was an abacus, you should not be on the self-checkout line. If you were old enough to be my grandma's babysitter pre-1916 when she joined us in this wonderful country, you should not be on the self-checkout line. If you're my dad, you should not be on the self-checkout line. And you should also never choose the Spanish option. Is that my name right? It's very tough to introduce a comedian on stage and even in my social life because there's this pressure to be funny right away. People are always like, yo, you're a comedian? Prove it. It doesn't happen with other jobs. Nobody's ever like, oh, you're a mole? Prove it. I don't think you want me to. Those of you that don't know, mole is somebody who gets a circumcision. Okay, fine. I'm not gonna. This is a Jewish contest. Um, so I like to make people laugh when that's what I'm trying to do, but when people are like, you are hilarious, man. And when you play basketball, do you really shoot that badly in real life? I'm like, yes, I do. I one time made somebody, uh, my girlfriend, my friend's girlfriend laugh. Uh, I told her a joke at the end, she laughed. And, I said, you understood? She was French, by the way. And uh, I said, you understood? She said, no, you have a funny face. I'm like, all right, that's what I was going for, I guess. I love the community. I don't like that everyone's obsessed with marriage. Every week, another friend of mine's getting married. All my single friends are talking about getting married. People are asking me when I'm getting married. The only people who don't bug me about marriage are the women I go out with. <laughs> two, two hours after being with me, they're like, eh, you shouldn't get married. <laughs> But I date a lot. I've tried online dating. Uh, people like to tell online dating horror stories, but they never tell the ones where it's their fault. Allow me to be the first. I was on my way to meet a girl, and she sends me a text message saying that she got to the place early, told me where she was sitting. Great. I realized I wasn't going to get there on time. I sent her a message saying, running a few minutes late, see you soon. Only, I have this touchscreen phone, and my finger slipped and hit send too early. So she's getting there, she gets a message that says, run. <laughs> Needless to say, when I got there, she was no longer there, but a lot of cops were. I'm actually conducting an interview, and this is my very first question. 
what is that? My very first question is, where did you go to college? I went to the College of Hard Knocks, the University of Hard Knocks. Okay, now the University of Hard Knocks, where is that located? It's located in Knoxville. <laughs> I'd like to do a uh, quick impression of Batman talking to an anti-feminist. Where is she? Thank you. Um, yeah. Here's my impression of a uh, opera singer having an orgasm. Thank you. And, uh, I'd like to do, for all of you guys now, a uh, quick rendition of uh, Shakespeare's King Henry, King Henry V, uh, St. Crispin's Day speech. Now my grandfather is free, I'm not going to have to watch it until I've been living. If you want to see the chef on the couch with that pity, which I'm not going to have to watch it. 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 I'm not going to have to Thank you. Jewish women have a long tradition of fighting for women's rights. So as a Jewish woman, I'm going to speak about the issue that involves the daily oppression of women, housework. Did you know that for every hour of housework a man does, a woman does four? As a woman, I am outraged that I cannot get away with that. That's right. I am a slob. There's more hair growing on my shower curtain than on Justin Bieber's entire body. <laughs> when I first heard the term dumpster diving, I thought it meant going to bed. So anyway, guys, I'm a Brooklyn Jew. We're like an original breed of cattle. And in fact, I performed at my first bar mitzvah at a synagogue on Saturday for a young guy named Shane Codlin. Where's my non-Jews in the room? All right, all, only my friends, okay? Don't throw them out, please. And Shane came up to me, honestly, I won't you, and he says, you know, Mark, I feel a little nervous. I'm a little embarrassed here. I have an Irish name, an Irish dad, and, and, and I'm getting bombed. So I said, Shane, no big deal. A couple weeks ago, I did Seymour Shapiro's baptism. Well, uh, it's a real problem. He's standing up line for a boat, and the crewman comes and pulls you away, saying, sir, I think you're too heavy for this ride. Stand on the <laughs> <laughs> uh, Father's Day just happened. Anybody do anything big for Father's Day? Yeah. Um, I, I said to this woman at work, I said, oh, do you have any big plans for Father's Day? She says this to me. She goes, uh, we don't celebrate Father's Day. Father's Day is a made-up holiday invented by Hallmark to make money. It's just not for us. And I'm thinking like, since when do we not take porn things because they were invented? You know? I feel like I said to her, oh, you know, spring's coming up. You can get a flu shot? She'd go, uh, no. We don't get the flu shot. The flu shot's a made-up vaccine invented by doctors to save lives. Just not for us. Or <laughs> probably like, oh, we're going to a trip to Florida. You guys flying? Uh, no. We don't take airplanes. The airplane's a made-up machine invented by the Wright brothers to get places faster. We'll walk. And father's still not listening. <laughs> not a great teacher. Anyway, it wasn't, the year wasn't a total loss. I, uh, I learned a lot of new things, a lot of new words that I didn't know before. Um, you know, I tried to get them from throwing the chairs, and they're like, Yo, like, why are you be pissing on us? Like, your class is OD. You wanted on us for no reason. <laughs> Sorry, can you translate what you just said? Because those are words that I've never heard. They'll be like, that's neck. The thing that connects my head to my shoulders, I'm really confused. So luckily, you know, with all technology, you know, I had saving grace. I pulled out my phone and typed into Google Translator all of these words. And apparently, the das beast, wild and OV, das neck, all that means. We feel that you are overreacting to the situation. You 
just tone it down a little, get a lot of minutes. Now, I want to tell you, I don't know if you've seen this guy yet, he wanted me to say something, this guy, I think his mother used that Jewish sweetener, Meshuga. I'm telling you. And if you've seen his yellow sneakers, he runs around going, I was the first guy on the yellow brick road. I didn't know the paint was wet. I'm telling you, as his rabbi, if he was Moses, we'd still be wandering. Thank you.